Hello, everyone. I hope you cannot hear all of the noise in the background. Somebody is building an addition to their home in my backyard. Well, not in my backyard, but you know what I mean. They're my neighbors across the way. So, it's Friday. <laughs> yes. I am so excited. The other day, I was kind of down, and I rarely let anything get me down. But of course, I said I did not want to post any videos because I was I went to bed literally at 6.30, 7 o'clock. But I woke up around 10, and to make me feel so much better, I started my new hobby. Cannon. So these are my bone broths, they're chicken. This was a new case of ball jars that had the lids already attached to them because of course, you know, when you buy them, they already come with lids. But I had a couple that did not have lids on them because I've already used them. And guess what I use? My Tattler, yes. Tat, tat, tat it up, tat it up. I use my tattlers and I am so happy with these things. I just don't know what to do. I think that I have made such a wise investment in buying these right here. That's, that's the best thing I could have done. Oh my God, it's the best thing I could have done. So today, you know what day it is. Not only is it Friday, It's T-Fall time! I'm going to my favorite grocery store today because I heard on the radio, yes, I am old school, I'm 50. Of course, I still listen to the radio. My favorite grocery store, Lidl, has a sale on chicken breast, and I am going to get some. They're 99 cents a pound. So I'm gonna get some of that, and today we are also going to can ground beef. I know, I know. I saw no sense in doing this before bars. I was like, why not? I think that would be a great idea. So we're going to do chicken and ground beef. So stay tuned. Love you guys and definitely keep praying. Oh yeah, guess what? If you see me back on this video and you don't see my luscious fro, that means I've gotten it back braided today. I don't know, gotta see how it goes, but once I take those braids out and I get this fro going, I feel kind of special, y'all. See you when we start canning. Hey, guess what? I'm back. Got it braided. Didn't get my side shaved because I am in the process of growing a little bit of my shaved head back. I am only going to do the video of me processing ground beef. Let's get started. Ground beef. And I'm gonna can some lamb. I'm gonna chop up a pepper, a onion, salt, pepper. I'm gonna keep the ground beef really simple. You don't really need that many spices. My jar's ready so that we can begin canning our ground beef. As I mentioned, I am going to cook my ground beef just a little bit because I want to get a good season on my ground beef so that when it's canned and I open this jar, I can be able to use it for tacos, for chili, for whatever it is that I wanna be able to use it for and it'll already be seasoned. And aminos, you know I can't do anything without the aminos. Let's get cracking. Put my beef in the pan. And really and truly, I should have actually started my onions first, but no biggie. But it's not gonna go in at the same time. Let's start chopping up our bell pepper. 
for both the lamb and the ground beef, along with mixing our onion. Adding my onions. Not putting all of those in right now with the ground beef because we're we're gonna can some ground lamb as well. Let's go ahead and add our seasoning. Pepper. That's a tablespoon. Salt. Again, that's another tablespoon. Eyes, I know. Two squirts of aminos. Jalapeno pepper powder. Just a little. A little goes a long way. Ground beef is sort of kind of cooked, not cooked all the way. We're going to start packing our jars. We're going to leave a Inch head space, and it's not going to be packed in there too tight. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to cook a, cook the meat a little bit beforehand, so I can make sure that I'm not putting too much in my jars. But we got three jars out of that. Um, how many pounds of ground beef? Two pounds of ground beef. We got three pint size jars. Now let's get this cleaned up and get started on our ground lamb. Ground beef is ready. Now we have the ground lamb in here. Season the lamb a little bit differently. Teaspoon of harissa. Teaspoon of onion powder. Teaspoon of garlic powder. Half a teaspoon of salt. And a teaspoon of pepper. Mix it. We're gonna cook it just like we did the ground beef, just a little bit. We're not gonna cook it all the way. When canning our lamb, we are actually going to add broth to our lamb. So let's get started with jarring up our lamb. And we're going to pour broth inside of our jars with one inch headspace. Y'all like the fact I got my my homestead flannel shirt on today? I think I'm doing a little something. Let's get started with adding the broth. Move these out of the way so you can see. I did not fill my jars all the way up with meat because I knew that I was going to put some broth in here. So we're going for inch head space. And there we go. Since we had to add um, broth inside of here. Hold on, let's just double check that that's an inch. That's an inch. Since we had to add broth in here, we're gonna debubble. Get those air bubbles out. I have my tea fall already warming up. I have some water in there. 
Now since we need to de bubble that, I can put a little bit more broth in this one. This one too. Line them up and wipe them down. Now, don't fret because there's more going into this large canner besides these items right here. I'm just not going to show you that process because I'm canning chicken. And if you go back and you look at some of my other videos, you'll see where I can chicken. So there's no need to show you me chopping it up and me putting it in the ball jars or anything like that. I'll put that link somewhere on this video so that you can go and check that video out if you want to see me can chicken. But for right now, we're just doing the lamb and the ground beef. Let's wipe off the rims. Vinegar on my paper towel and wipe off any excess oils or meat particles that may be on the jar. So we got all of our rims wiped down. Let's go ahead and get our lids together. Typically, I know you guys are amazed at how I'm able to dip my hand down in this hot water and pull these lids out. I'm not doing that today. finger tight, load her in. And now I'm about to use my Tatler lids. Here we have the plastic and the gasket. I put it, fit it so nicely inside of here, lay it on top of my jar, put my ring on, put my finger here and twist it. You want to twist it just enough where the jar starts moving around. And after it starts moving around, that's just a, the most you need to twist it at that moment. Because after you process with your Tatler lids, what you're going to do then is once the bubbling ceases, after you pull them out, you're gonna tighten them with a rag around it, please, because it'll still be hot. Tighten it down some more and that is how it will continue to seal. I'm gonna go ahead and put my rack on top of that because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add my chicken and both of these things, since I'm using paint jars for both, both this ground beef and lamb process at 75 minutes in paint jars and so does the chicken. We'll be back to show you how all of it comes together. We got our T-fall loaded up with our chicken, our lamb, and our ground beef. Let's turn her up. I had already inspected my lid to make sure that everything was working properly on it. My seal is on here well. As I can show you, my seal is good. I have a brand new seal. I didn't need one, but I felt that I did, so I bought one. Line up my arrows, click her into place. Now remember, we're starting off on steam. Once we get a steady stream, we will start our timer for 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes is over, I will put this on number two, because in my elevation, that's what number I need to have it at. Once it gets up to number two on the gauge, then I will start my timer for 75 minutes. We'll be back to see what we have. Good morning, y'all. I haven't checked my ticket to see if I am a lottery winner yet. 
but you can bet your bottom dollar if I am these videos out. <laughs> Update on ground beef and lamb canning. Here is my chicken, which I didn't show you guys because I've already done chicken. Process it again, y'all. That's why it's always exciting to take the rings off. Ground beef. And I already know that this one did not process. This is one of my lambs. I went to pull the test, nothing. So what we're gonna do is, I know why this one didn't process. This ring was not the proper ring. So I'm gonna go and get another ring and reseal this one. I'm gonna process it again, but this time I'm gonna use my emerald because it's no reason to get this big thing going again. Hello, we are back and we reprocessed our chicken and our lamb in the Emerald Lagasse pressure cooker. And here we go. Overall, I would say this is a success. I don't know how the meat is gonna taste once we open it up, but when we do, we will record a video for that too. Thanks for joining me, happy canning, bye.